A resistor is an electric circuit element for which the voltage across the element is proportional to the current through the element, a phenomenon known as Ohm's Law. In this lecture, we'll define the quantities of resistance and conductance for resistors and provide a simple introduction to the way in which Ohm's Law can be used for the analysis and design of electric circuits. Well, a resistor is an electric circuit element with two terminals, and the symbol that we use for a resistor looks like this. A resistor is defined by the relationship between the voltage across and the current through the element. And when defining that relationship, we use a polarity and reference polarity the way I've drawn it in this diagram. That is, we think of the current coming through the resistor on the same side as the positive polarity of the voltage that we talk about. For an ideal resistor, the voltage across is proportional to the current through the device so the voltage-current relationship is a straight line. The numeric value for the slope of the line is called the resistance. So the slope of this line is the thing we'll call the resistance. Now this model of a straight line relationship between the voltage and the current is an ideal relationship between those quantities. Any practical resistor will have some limitations and one of the most common is that we might find in practice this relationship might roll off for high values of current and for low values of current. But for most of the problems that we'll analyze in our initial study of circuits, we'll assume that an ideal resistor does in fact have a linear relationship between voltage and current. Well, the mathematical relationship between the voltage across and current through a resistor is known as Ohm's law. V equals IR is something electrical engineers learn early in their education and never forget. Now, I've written it in two ways here. One for the general case where the voltages, voltage and current is time varying and one in which the voltage and current do not change in time, or the DC situation. Because resistance converts current to voltage, its units are volts per amp. And the concept of resistance is so important that we call this unit, one volt per one amp, an ohm, and use a symbol that looks like the capital Greek letter omega. Now it's sometimes more convenient to think about the way a resistor converts a voltage to current in this relationship. And for those situations, we associate a resistor with something called a conductance, often use the symbol G, where we use the symbol R for resistance. And this is the reciprocal of resistance. The units for this are amps per volt, and that's something that is called Siemens, and often uses the capital S to signify those units. Well, once we understand the relationship between the voltage across and current through a resistor, we can easily determine the power associated with the resistor by specifying either the voltage or current. To see this, let's look at a, just a simple segment of a circuit that has a resistor with some resistance R and we'll associate some voltage across that resistor this way and let's define a current flowing through the resistor this way. Now because we've drawn the current reference direction into the positive polarity of the voltage we can use Ohm's law to describe the relationship between the voltage and current as long as we know the resistance. So repeating Ohm's law here, that is V of T is equal to the resistance times the current or we could say that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Now, if we wanted to compute the power associated with this resistor, that would be, well, we've got a current entering the positive polarity of the voltage, so that'll just be current 
times voltage. And if we use this first version of Ohm's law and replace the voltage with R times I, what we'll have is R I squared. So it's the resistance times the square of the current. And that would have units of watts. If we use the second term and replace the current with the voltage divided by the resistance, we'd have the voltage squared divided by resistance. And again, this would have units of watts. So either of these will work. If we know the current, we can take the resistance times the square of the current. If we know the voltage, we can take the the voltage squared divide by the resistance. In general, resistance values range from zero to positive infinity. Now at one extreme, a resistance of zero corresponds to a simple wire, or something we commonly refer to as a short. Because the resistance is zero, the voltage across a short is always equal to zero, independent of the value for the current. At another extreme, a resistance of infinity corresponds to an opening in a circuit. Because the conductance, which is the reciprocal of the resistance, is now zero, the current through a short is always zero regardless of the voltage across it. Well, let's look at an example where we have a 10 volt voltage source providing a voltage across a 2 kilo ohm or 2000 ohm resistor. What we'd like to do is figure the current that goes through the resistor and the power associated with the resistor. So the current that flows out of the source through the resistor is all the same. And we'll label that as I. Now the voltage, if there's 10 volt increase from this point to this point, and these are shorts, so there's no voltage change across those, then that means from this point to this point, from here to here across the resistor, there's a 10 volt increase. So with this current coming through the positive terminal of our voltage, we can compute that the voltage across the resistor, which is 10 volts, is equal to the current through the resistor times the resistance. So that would be 2K times the current. So that tells us that the current is 10 divided by 2 times 10 to the third, which would be equal to 5 times 10 to the negative third, and that's in amps, which would be 5 milliamps. Now if we want to compute the power, we can do this in a variety of ways. We can multiply the current times the voltage, or we could use one of our relationships that we've developed the current squared times the resistance or the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Well, we've got the current and the voltage computed, so let's do that. That would be 5 times 10 to the minus 3 amps times 10 volts. So that would be 50 times 10 to the minus 3. Let's just call that a milli, and the units are watts. So we'd have 50 milliwatts. Okay, let's look at another example. So in this situation, we've got a 10 kilo ohm resistor, 10,000 ohm resistor, that's connected to a 4 milliamp current source. So this current source is pushing 4 milliamps of current through this circuit. And we'd like to figure out the voltage across this resistor and the power associated with the resistor. Now to compute this voltage, let's say that for some reason, what we'd like to define the voltage as the increase that goes from the top to the bottom in this diagram of this resistor. So now a 4 milliamp current flowing in this direction is the same as a negative 4 milliamp current flowing in this direction. 
So now if we want to use Ohm's law, we can say that that voltage is the current, which is negative 4 times 10 to the negative third amps times this resistance, which is 10 times 10 to the third ohms. So that's going to be negative 40 volts. Now for instance, had we defined the voltage with the polarity negative on the bottom and positive on the top, what we would have found is that in that case the voltage would have been 40 volts. So either way is fine. We can say that there's negative 40 volts from this side to this, or we can say there's positive 40 volts from this side to that side. Now the power associated with this element would be the current times the voltage through it. And so the current is negative 4 times 10 to the minus third into the positive terminal. And the voltage is negative 40 volts. So this would be 100 60 times 10 to the negative third, so that's a milliwatts. Well, let's look at one final example. Suppose we had a 5 volt power supply which increases the voltage from this side to that side by positive 5 volts, and we attach that to a resistor of some resistance R. And what we'd like to do is select the resistance value so that the power associated with the resistor is 2 milliwatts. Well to do that we know a relationship for the power associated with the resistor is the voltage across the resistor squared divided by the resistance. So if we want to determine this resistance That would be the voltage squared divided by the power that we'd like to see across that resistor. And the voltage squared, that's going to be 25. And we'll divide that by 2 times 10 to the negative third. So that's going to be 12.5 times 10 to the third, and that's a kilo ohm. So that's a way that we could design a value for a resistance or pick a value for a resistance that would give us a specified power.